We're going to be talking to you about honor, and I, I'm telling you, honor has been burning in my heart from last Father's Day because last Father's Day I preached on honor. And so I've been thinking about honor, and Pastor John Myers has got a song that he's going to be doing in a minute that has honor in it, and I want you to listen to that. Um, so today we're going to talk about honor. Um, I want to bring Angie up here too because Angie is going to, uh, would you get me that mic, uh, Jeremy? Angie is going to give us an announcement. And uh, I want her husband, Ricky Dory, to come up too, real quick, and share a little bit with us. And then uh, we're going to think about honor because the Bible says, honor your father and your, that it might be well with you and that you might have long life. Okay. So I want to talk about the value of honor, man. Because we, if, if we'll just get one word in this nation, honor, it'll change this world, change this nation. So um, we're going to talk about honor and we honor you too. And um, that's why I brought you up because we honor you and uh, we're all getting older. So here we are. <laughs> we're older than you. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us what exciting, tell us what the Lord is doing so that everybody, our family is with you. I would love to. So I have been um, serving the Lord full force for 38 years on the front lines in ministry. I have in, the, in those 38 years, um, have you ever gone to God? I'm so tired. Yeah, I know I'm not alone. Well, in those moments, he'd always say, Come to me, I'll give you strength. And he does. He wants us to find our strength in him. But then there comes a time in our life sometimes that God will say, hey, I am going to unplug you for a season because there's something that I want to impart in you. I want to refresh you. I want to renew you, but I need to unplug you. And so this isn't a, just a decision that was made flippantly because to be quite honest, everything's going great here. It's like, Lord, I mean, it's a beautiful thing to be in at Miracle Place Church right now to see what God's doing. But as God would have it, three weeks ago, he said, Angie, your time to unplug is now. There's not enough gum for this one. <laughs> and if you know me, you know. And so I just, I said, oh, because I wasn't molly grubbing, I wasn't complaining, I was actually enjoying and embracing this season. And so I began to say, okay, Lord, how many of you say, God, if this is you, then, and you put a fleece. Yes, Lord. I said, God, if this is you, when I tell my husband, he's gonna, he's gonna be in agreement. So that was the first test. I told him and he said, good for you. You deserve that. I was like, okay, God. Um, fleece number two. <laughs> when I tell Bishop, he's going to be in agreement also. I said, you're fired. No, no. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Just he's going to repent shortly before he preaches. And I got so you first. I, 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 um, he sat in my office and the Holy Spirit said, say it now. And I was like, uh, -uh. and he's like, say it now. And, and I wasn't, I'm not scared of Bishop. I didn't want to disappoint. Amen. So I opened my mouth and he looked at me. He was quiet for a little bit. And he said, Angie, this is God. Yeah. And I said, okay, Lord. So I am after today's service, unplugging for the next six weeks. I love each of you dearly, and I covet your prayers. Number one, if you know me, it's not easy to slow down. So during this season, my charge from God is to not do anything, Amen. just to be. I'm a little bit scared and a little bit nervous because I know how to do, but I'm not too good at being. So I covet your prayers during this season and know that I love each and one, every one of you dearly and 
this is a good thing. This is a great thing. And I am so excited and so honored to serve under pastors that say, hey, we're behind you. Yeah. And we're with you. And whatever God says, we're with you. Yeah. And so I want to give honor where honor is due. Yes. Yes. Let's pray for um, Angie Dory right now. Would y'all just stretch forth your hands? Jeannie, would you just come forward too? And um, let's pray for Angie. I'm going to take that mic right there. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you so much for faithfulness, for boldness, for your authority. God, we thank you for your leadings and your guidance. And now as we enter into a new season here with Sister Angie Dory, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to speak to her heart clearly as she takes time away and just sits in your presence. We pray for you, Holy Spirit, that you will give her direction you will give her vision, that you will refresh her, renew her, strengthen her, encourage her, and bless her and her husband, Ricky Dory, now in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we bless. We bless Ricky and Angie Dory, and we bless every season of their life, and we release the perfect will and purpose of God in their lives right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, do your thing now in the name of Jesus. And if you're in agreement with that, say amen. 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 All right. Praise the Lord. All right. We honor you guys. Um, Pastor John has got a song too that I want to sing right now. And many of y'all know that me and Pastor John, before this church was a church, before we even thought of this place, we traveled all over the world, all over the United States, doing revivals and singing and, and cutting up. And we're going to be starting to do a little bit of that stuff because the presence of God was so strong in those days. And so uh, this is one of our old songs that we used to sing. And it talks about honor. Here we go. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me. Because you died and rose again How about that? I'm forgiven I'm forgiven Because you were forsaken I'm accepted I'm accepted You were condemned I'm alive and well Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again Amazing love Amazing love How can it be That you my king would die for me Amazing love I know it's true it's my joy to honor you And all I do Let me honor you You are my King You are my King Come on, is it your King? You my King, Jesus, you are my King. Amazing love, amazing love, how can it be? You, 
my King would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you in all I do. I honor you Come in all I do. All I do on you Amazing love How can it be That you my king would die for me Amazing love I know It's my joy to honor you in all I do. Let me honor you in all I do. Let me honor you. Let us honor you, Lord, in all I do. I honor you. Whistle it or hum it or something. How many of you believe that in all we do, we need to honor Him? God teaches how to honor today. Give us the revelation of what it means to honor first you families, our mamas, our daddies, our children, our co-workers, teach us how to honor one another. Sing that holy song real quick. John's going to be singing some of the songs that he wrote to Father's Day, we're just partying.
to travel they would the whole church would be on the ground everybody demon screaming man power of God manifest we saw some great things so I told brother John I said some of those old songs we did let's start doing a few of those in our service and bring that revival spirit back in this place and watch God I said, look, the presence of God that we've experienced in our lives, let's take the whole world with us. Let's just invite them into the presence of God that we experience, and they'll experience the same presence. Shout somebody. All right, so honor, honor, honor. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to honor. <clears throat> so honor attracts and hosts the presence of God. When you honor, it releases heaven. It releases God's presence. That's why honor is so important. And I love the scripture because life flows through honor. Matthew chapter 10, and there's a reward for honor. This is something that, this is the revelation of honor right here. He that receives you, receives me, Jesus. Listen, in order to honor, you have to receive a person. Because every person has gifts. Every person has an anointing in their life. They've been endowed from heaven. God has downloaded in all of us gifts. He's downloaded an anointing in our lives. And when we receive people, we receive their gifts. We receive their anointing. We receive their God-given blessing that they have in their life. That's why it's so important. You, listen, until I honor Jeannie Sinclair, I can never get with a gift that God put in her for me. That's how I get it. When I honor her, she gets nicer and nicer. When I don't honor her, the sister, she's a, she's a hard one now. She can, the, the same principle works. And that's what's wrong with our society. That's what's wrong with this wokeness. That's what's wrong with the, this identity. Because here's the revelation. God has created all of us with a certain God-given identity. And if we try to use any other identity, it becomes an alias and it has no authority and no power from heaven because it wasn't given to you by God. That's what's wrong with it. Uh, I, I'm a girl now. I'm going to go into the girl's bathroom. You won't get no reward if you ain't really a girl. Because you can't change your name. If you're a man, you're a man. Listen, you, if you're a man and you were created a man, that's your gift. That's who your identity is. That's what God has given you. That's what's blessed. If you try to make yourself something that God didn't create you to be, you take on a false identity. You take on an alias. Man, I had many alias names. James Lewis Winfield, Ken Douglas Smith. <laughs> By the way, if you're going to do an alias, make sure you do a common name like a Smith. Makes it harder for them to find you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> of course, no criminal tips, Gene. He says, <laughs> you know why I could never be blessed with Ken Douglas Smith or James Lewis Winfield? Because God didn't give me that identity. He didn't give me that name. And here's what the scripture says. Now listen to it. Because names matter. You gotta call people what God has created them to be. That is an honor. Honor releases heaven. It releases a flow from heaven in your life. Shout. Look, man, I'm saying something great. I'm preaching better than you're shouting. Jesus, this thing is in my heart. Listen to the scripture. He that receives you receives me, Jesus. And he that receives me receives him who sent me who is the father. He that receives a prophet in a prophet's name. A prophet's reward shall he receive. And he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Next scripture. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones even a cup of H2O, but only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Can I tell you today, the revelation of honor is this, there is a reward that comes from honor. When you honor, it releases a reward in your life. When you call somebody by the name of, of heaven's download in them and their gift, you get their reward. Whatever God has put in them, when you honor them, you get Get it, shout, shout. I, I shout, Miss Joyce, I need help. Man, I think I've said enough about the name and the reward. But man, when I look at woke society, man, and I don't even want to be taken off Facebook, but the thing is this, is you can't call something something it's not. And you can't be so concerned about the words that you say everything right not to offend anybody because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings when the truth is the truth. So man, I'm just telling you now when we say we're honoring people, I'm not going to try to hurt your feelings, but at the same time, I'm not going to compromise with you. I'm going to speak the truth in love because I got to be able to tell you the truth. You got to be able to hear what's right from heaven. So it's so important. So important. And when I see our society with the fussing and the fighting that's going on in our political arena, Man, I'm telling you right now, it's because we're not honoring one another. When we start honoring one another, we will release heaven. It'll be a funnel from heaven that comes down to planet earth and releases God's authority and power and blessing and reward in all of our lives. All right. So honor produces faith. Somebody said, how in the world did honor produce faith? Honor produces blessing. Honor produces destiny in your life. Hebrews chapter three, verse 19. It says, so we see that they, Israel, could not enter into the promised land because of unbelief in their life. Did you know that Israel, most of Israel didn't make it into God's promised land because of a dishonor in their life. They didn't honor the authority of God. They didn't honor the men of God that God ordained to lead them, Moses and Aaron. And as a result, they ended up spending 40 years in the wilderness and they never entered into God's best for their life. Thank God, God still gave them water. He still gave them bread from heaven. They still uh, were, were taken care of by, by God, but they never crossed over to the promised land. Somebody said, the promised land's heaven. No, the promised land has is, is got enemies in it. Heaven ain't got no enemies. We ain't talking about heaven. We're talking about crossing into 
the promised land of God that he has for you, the land that he's given you. And that promised land uh, is God's perfect will and purpose for your life. But you will never get into that promised land by walking in dishonor. The way that you get into the the best of God that he has for you is by honoring. You honor God. You honor your father. You honor your mother. You honor people you work with. You honor people that you're in the marketplace with. Wherever you go, you walk in honor. And when you walk in honor, you release the rewards that God has placed in every one of those people that you deal with on a daily basis. And those rewards release God's blessing in your life. Shout some body why couldn't Jesus do um, uh, many miracles in his own town listen to this and when Jesus was in and into Capernaum there came unto him a centurion and he was asking him and saying Lord my servant is at home sick he's got the pulse he's 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 paralyzed and he's grievously tormented And Jesus said unto him, I'll come immediately to your house and I'll heal him. And the centurion, he's a Roman uh, captain, a leader. He's not even uh, in the faith. And he said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed because I understand authority. I understand honor. I understand rank. Because I say unto one, one guy come here to another go and they all listen to me because I understand authority. I understand honor. I understand a rank. And as a result, I understand your authority and I honor you for who you are. You don't even have to come to my house. All you got to do is just speak the word. And when you speak the word because of who you are, as I honor you, Jesus Christ, even a Roman centurion soldier, you just speak the word and my servant will be healed. Guess what he did? And he said unto him, um, he, he, Jesus spoke the word. The servant uh, of the centurion was supernaturally healed. He got up and he started walking. And this is what Jesus said. Verse 12. Put it back. Verse 12. And he said, I say unto you that many shall come from the east into the west. And they'll sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out of darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth in other words some that are playing church come on now and not going to be there verse 12 are you there all right so um and jesus said unto the servant go your way and he believed and he received healing so i don't know what's going on with the scripture but we gotta they're all messed up so So here's the revelation of the centurion. The centurion understood honor. He understood authority. And as a result, it released his faith to receive healing. Come on now. Israel, when they dishonored the authority that God had established for them, they didn't have, they never entered into God's best for their life. Are y'all alive out there? And as a result, They roamed for 40 years and they died in the wilderness and never did cross over into God's best for their life. Somebody shout, I got to honor. Somebody shout, I got to honor. Here's what some people say. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. Let me tell you where that person's at. That person's either dead or in prison, or in the army. That's where that person's at. (laughs) All right. So honor produces blessing. Say blessing. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother that it might be what? Well with you and that you might have long life. But listen to this scripture in Exodus 20, 12. That your days may be long upon the earth. Back, you got to wait till I finish reading it. All right. (laughs) Upon the land which the Lord your God gives you. 
How many believe God gives you the land that you live on? Honor produces blessing. I want to take a look at that scripture real quick. Um, I tell you what, uh, let's look at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Here's what the Bible says. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment of, with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. First thing he says for the children, children are to obey. Obeying is honoring. Once you get to be a, an, an adult, you honor your father and your mother. Uh, right now, me and Jeannie, we've got her father and her mother at our house right now. It's because we're honoring them. Uh, because we understand that, and, and let me just say, are they some more mouths? Are they some more people in our house? Of course they are. Uh, so I'm trying to say it right. I don't want to say it wrong. My mother-in-law's watching. <laughs> I'm trying to say that they're not trouble, but they are trouble, okay? In a good way. My wife says, don't say that. She said, thank you. I love you, mom. And, and we, we got you. So no, no worries. We got you. But what I'm saying is anytime you take on responsibility for another human being, obviously it's, it's another person that you have to take care of. No problem, Keith. But the thing is, is, is it is another person, but we got to do it because we honor our father and our mother. So, so let me tell you something. No matter how old your father and your mother are, you still got to honor them because that's right. By the way, you wouldn't be here if it would, wouldn't be for them. So same way as the money you got in your pocket, if God wouldn't have multiplied you and caused you to be fruitful, you wouldn't have it. So, so of course I give to God. Of course I take care of my, my in-laws because I'm honoring them. I'm walking in honor because when I walk in honor, I release rewards in my life. When I walk in nastiness, then I release a curse in my life. So when I'm dishonoring, I'm roaming around in the wilderness for, for 40 years, shout somebody. All right, so listen to this scripture, Romans chapter 13, one and two. We're talking about honor produces um, blessing. Let every soul, that's all of us, be subject, underline that in your Bible. Be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of who? But God. And the powers that be are ordained of who? God. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists, they resist God's ordinance, and they that resist shall receive in themselves a judgment. When you, re, when you resist God's ordinance, God's ordinance is honor. When you resist God's authority and won't obey, you release a judgment, damnation on you. So when I honor, I release God's reward in my life. When I dishonor, I release a curse, a judgment in my life is what the scripture says. Are y'all out there? Luke 2, 51 and 52, and he went with them and came to Nazareth and was subject, this is Jesus. Let every soul be subject unto the powers that be. Can I get an amen? amen. All right, we're talking about subject. Subject means submitting. Subject means honoring. And this is Jesus. And when Jesus went down with them, he came to Nazareth and was subject unto his parents. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart because you remember they left him for three days in Jerusalem. 
And Jesus increased in wisdom and statue and in favor with God and man. Here's what I want you to see. Even Jesus himself submitted. He subjected himself to, <clears throat> to the authority that God had established in his life. Somebody give God glory in this place. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter five. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you that your days will be long, prolonged, and that it may go well with you again in the land again which the Lord your God is giving you. Here's my thought about this. Honor produces blessing. And, I, and I'll start to think about circling the airport right now. Land in this plane. I thought about Germany. I thought about Hitler. When you study history, Hitler actually went after the children. When I think about what's going on in America about about critical race theory and all this stuff that they're trying to teach in schools, drag queens and stuff in school. They're going after the kids. And what Hitler convinced the kids of was if their parents didn't believe in Nazism, that they would turn their parents into the government. And immediately when the kids stop honoring their father and their mother, it released not a reward, but it released a curse on Germany that actually caused them to kill millions and millions of precious Jews, millions of precious people. And it was a result. So Hitler took Germany by taking the kids' hearts and turning them against their parents in dishonor and took the whole nation down. And I'm telling you right now, and I'm gonna speak to the cameras as I close, and we'll pick this up. If we allow our children to be taken from us, where the parents no more have the authority in their life, and they're not honoring their father and their mother, it will release a curse on America that will destroy this great nation that God created. This nation is a Christian nation. We are founded upon the word of God. Our forefathers were Christians. They believed. The reason why America has become what America is in a little over 200 years and there's other countries that have been around for thousands of years that have never reached the level that we're at in America is because of the spirit of the living God and the word of God that's being, uh, that, that we were founded upon, our, our principles, our values, our morals. That's who we are. We are Christian age. By the way, America has a mandate from God that is called not only to be blessed with in herself, but she's called to be a light to the entire world because we are a Christian. We are an evangelist. We are called as a missionary by God, America, to reach the entire world. And the devil is trying to put the light of Christ out in this nation. I'm telling you, we got to rise up. We got to fight for the glory of God. We got to stand for the word of God. We got to fight for our children. We got to fight for our moms, our dads, our husbands, our wives. We got to fight in this nation for the glory of God. We are Christians. We're born again. We're full of the Holy Ghost. We love God. We love the light. And we extinguish and put out darkness. Light dispels darkness. And we release the glory of God in this nation. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. We got to learn how to honor. We'll start honoring. We'll honor all of our family members first. We will just start loving and being kind and caring and serving and laying our lives down one for another. As we do that, we will release heaven's reward. 
because heaven's reward only comes with honor. Man, it's time out for this foolishness in this nation. Somebody's got to stand up. Somebody's got to set it right and right the ship. Come on, Pastor John, sing that. Come on. Before God, is there any forgiveness for the things that I've done? Forgiveness for things that I have done. Is it pardon for a sinner? Know that I am one before you. Come on, before the Lord right now. Here we are, God. Here we are. We take this heart of foulness, make it clean again. Would you pour out your mercy if I confess my sins before you? Before you. Point my feet in the way they should go. Place your Holy Spirit in me. Lead me in the way of everlasting. Long to have a heart that is pure. Need to have a heart that is pure before you. Before you. Say, Lord, here we are. We're before you in your presence. God, help me honor you first and then every person that is a gift that you have given me. God, teach me how to honor 